Welcome to What is Truth? Brought to you by the Southern New Mexico Church of God in Las Cruces, New Mexico. What is Truth? is a weekly program which seeks to focus our attention on the truth of God's Word. Now, with this week's lesson, here's Pastor Meyer Spock. Welcome to the program. Now, many people, you know, many people go through life without having a goal, especially when it comes to God. How do you feel? What is your goal in life? Does it include God in your goal? Do you have a goal? Now, it says in uh, Matthew chapter 20, I'd like you to turn to Matthew chapter 20, but, but while you're turning there, I'd like to offer two very important booklets. The first booklet is, What Do You Mean Salvation? What Do You Mean Salvation? And the second booklet is, Why Were You Born? Now, at the bottom of that booklet, it says, Do you really know why you were born? Do you realize God has a purpose being worked out. Most fail to understand that purpose. Read this booklet, you will be surprised. Now you can have these two free booklets, they're absolutely free. You can have a DVD of this program if you'd like, that's also free. We have nothing to sell on our program. And you'll never, we never ask the public for money. So please call the phone number on your screen and uh, while we're at it, why don't you get your Bible, a notebook, and a pen? I'm positive you're going to want to write down these scriptures and look them up. So, we're going to Matthew chapter 20. We're going to the words of Jesus Christ. And we're going to look in verse 16. So, it says here in verse 16. So, the last shall be first, and the first last. For many be called, but few chosen. Okay, Jesus Christ says here, many people are going to be called, but few are going to be chosen. Why? Why is that? Well, our purpose today is really to explain this. Explain this. You have a calling, and your calling involves God. And it says, many be called, but few chosen. Now, I'd like you to turn to 2 Peter chapter 3, and uh, we'll look at verse 9. 2 Peter 3, verse 9, and, and that says... And we're there now. And it says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Now, is this a contradiction between the Apostle Paul? And Jesus Christ? No. No, it's not. God is really not willing that any should perish. He wants everyone to come into the kingdom of God and into the family of God. But the question is, many are called. The calling goes out. Many are called, but few respond to the calling. Now, you must respond to the calling. So when God calls, you must respond. We're going to show that as we go along here. Now we're going to we're going to Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7 and we're going to look in verse 1. Revelation 7 verse 1. And it says here after these things I saw four angels 
standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed a hundred and forty-four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Now, this names the tribes, and it says 12,000 out of the tribe of Judah, 12,000 out of this tribe, 12,000 of that tribe, and so forth. Now, where are these people? Are these people all Jews, the children of Israel? Most people think that these verses are regarding the Jewish people. They're not. Why are they not? Because 10 tribes, that was the kingdom of the north, they, Israel was separated at the time of Jeroboam and Rehoboam, that was Solomon's son, and they were separated. There were 10 tribes in the north with their capital in Samaria. There were two and a half tribes in the south with their capital at Jerusalem. Now, the ten tribes in the north were conquered by Shalmaneser, the king of Assyria, and he took them away around 719 B.C., 719 years before Christ. He took them up north, and he took them away into Europe. And a hundred years later, over a hundred years later, in 585, and also 605 BC, King Nebuchadnezzar the, uh, captured Jerusalem and took the Jews to Babylon. So that was over a hundred years later. These people were separated. The ones that were taken away to Babylon had the opportunity to come back to Jerusalem. The ones who were the 10 tribes in the north never came back. So where are they? Well, they settled in various countries in Europe. They spread out and kept spreading out. The tribes became great nations. Now, God is saying here that he's taking 12,000 people out of the nations that he's talking about, 12 nations, and he's bringing, he's sealing them, which is protection. He's protecting them against the day of the Lord. That's God's punishment on this earth. You mean to tell me he's only going to protect 144,000 out of 7 billion people? That's a drop in the bucket. That isn't even a drop in the bucket. Okay? Many are called, but few are chosen. So God is dealing here with a very, very, very small group of people, comparatively speaking. Now let's read on. Let's drop down to verse 9. And here we're reading in the same chapter, chapter 7, and we're reading in verse 9. And it says, after this, I beheld, and lo, a great multitude. So this is after the tribulation, after the day of the Lord. We're, gonna, we're going to see that. Which no man could number of all the nations and kindreds and people and tongues, languages, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white, white robes and palms in their hands. 
Now this represents salvation. White robes and palms represent salvation. And cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sits upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing, glory, wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? Where did they come from? And I said to him, Sir, you know. So he, the angel asked him a question that he couldn't answer. And he said to me, These are they which came out of the great tribulation. Now, wait a minute. How could they come out of the great tribulation unless they were in the great tribulation? So these are people who were in the great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him night and day in his temple. And he who sits on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more. Well, they were hungry through the three and a half years of tribulation on this earth. Neither thirst anymore. Yeah, they were thirsty too. Neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. So they had to suffer. When it was hot, they had to suffer. When it was cold, they suffered. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. So here is a great multitude which came out of the great tribulation. Well, in order to come out, they had to be in the great tribulation in order to come out of it. Does that make sense to you? Okay, let's go back to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6, Isaiah was asked a question here, and let's see what his answer was. Isaiah chapter 6, and we'll look in verse 8. And here it says, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us. Who's going to volunteer? Then said I, that's Isaiah, here am I, send me. You know, when we were in the army, I was in the army, we were told never to volunteer. And here's a volunteer right here. And what does God say to this volunteer? And he said, go and tell this people, hear you indeed but understand not, and see that see in you indeed, you can see, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert, and be healed. Wow, now that's unusual for God to say that. So God was using Isaiah through 66 chapters to talk about obeying God, to talk about repentance. There's so many chapters about repentance in the book of Isaiah, and Isaiah did as he was told. Now, we will be right back. We have a short intermission. We'll be right back. Please don't go away. Welcome to La Buena Vida Women's Club, located away from the crowds, but close to home. Come in throughout the day for Jazzercise, the world's dance fitness leader for nearly 40 years. 
treat yourself to a relaxing massage or unwind the lounge area or outside on the balcony with friends. La Buena Vida Women's Club, located and designed with women in mind. For information, call Diane at 650-9721. If you're looking for a new pet that you can cherish every day, consider adopting from a shelter. Shelters are full of healthy, loyal, fun, loving pets, eager to become a part of your family. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. So bring home your new buddy today. To find out more, you can visit the shelterpetproject.org. Come and see us today and discover why our service is second to none. In business for over 17 years, we have the right car for you. When you buy a vehicle from Fiesta Motors, we do everything possible to ensure your satisfaction. Located at the corner of El Paseo and Main, see you there. Celebrate Fiesta Motors, we're buying a car, it's always a celebration. Welcome back to the program. Would you turn with me in your Bibles to John chapter 17? John 17. And here it says very simply in John 17, verse 17, it says, Sanctify them. That means make them holy through your truth. Your word is is truth. The Word of God is true. The name of this program is What is Truth? And what is truth? It's God's Word is truth. Now let's go back into the Bible into, we'll go back into Proverbs chapter 29. Proverbs chapter 29 and we'll look in verse 18. Proverbs 29 verse 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he who keeps the law, happy is he, or blessed is he. Keeping God's law, you're being blessed. Keeping his commandments, you're being blessed. Keeping his statutes, his judgments, you're being blessed. Now let's look at that very carefully. Where there is no vision, the people perish. You have to have a goal. Now I'm going to tell you about a lady who had a goal. Her name was Florence Chadwick. Well, who was Florence Chadwick? Uh, now Florence Chadwick was born November 8th, 1918. And when she was the when she was 10 years old, she won a competition in swimming. And at the age of 11, she competed in her first challenging competition, a rough water swim. She placed fourth in the event. Now I'm going to show you this. I'm going to show you this here. In 1952, Florence attempted to swim the 26 miles between Catalina Island and California coastland. And as she began, she was flanked by small boats that watched for sharks and were prepared to help her if she got into trouble, if she got hurt or grew tired. After about 15 hours, a thick fog set in. Florence began to doubt her ability and she told her mother, who was in one of the boats, that she didn't think she could make it. She swam for another hour before asking to be pulled out, unable to see the coastline. So she was unable to see her goal. She couldn't see the coastline due to the fog. And as she sat in the boat, she found out that she had stopped swimming just one mile away from her destination. She only missed it by one mile. She made 25 miles, 25 miles swim. 
Two months later, Chadwick tried again. This time was different. The same thick fog set in, but she made it because she said that she kept a mental image of the shoreline. She knew what her goal was. She kept a mental image of that shoreline in her mind. So she set a goal, and while she swam, and she made it there. She made those 26 miles. Chadwick's biggest contribution to swimming history occurred on August 1950, actually August 8, 1950, when she swam, she crossed the English Channel in 13 hours and 20 minutes, breaking the then current world record held by an American swimmer, Gertrude Ederle. One year later, Chadwick crossed the English Channel yet again from England to France, this time in 16 hours and 22 minutes, thus making her the first woman to swim the English Channel in both directions and setting a record for the England-France journey. Fantastic woman, fantastic woman. She made it across the channel. Could you swim across the English Channel? I couldn't, I'll admit that. Let's go now to uh, Matthew chapter 25. Matthew 25. If you don't have a goal, uh, you're lost. We're going to Matthew chapter 25 and it says here, then the kingdom of God, then the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. But they who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Well, what did they expect? They would run out of oil, wouldn't they? But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. And while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Now notice it. These are all virgins, all of them. And at midnight, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes. Go you out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are going out, or going out. But the wise answer saying, uh, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go you rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went out to buy, the bridegroom came. And they who were ready, there's the key, they were ready for the wedding. They were ready to marry Jesus Christ. They were ready for the bridegroom went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut afterward came also the other virgins saying lord lord open to us but he answered and said verily i say unto you i know you not let's go back to proverbs chapter 29 proverbs chapter 29 is a very important proverb and i'd like to read it and we'll look in verse 18, Proverbs chapter 29, and we'll look in verse 18. And here it says, where there is no vision, the people perish. If you don't set a goal, then you're not gonna make it. But he who keeps the law, happy is he, or blessed is he. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Let's go to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. There were a bunch of Jews came to the temple and uh, they came on Pentecost, on the day of Pentecost. Incidentally, that was a holy day, one of God's holy days back in the Old Testament. And these people came there to keep that holy day. And we're going to look in verse... 20, we're going to look at verse 
uh, 36. And Peter's uh, preaching to these people. And he says, therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made the same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Now, these were people who were keeping God's laws. They were keeping God's holy day and they were here at Pentecost. Then Peter said unto them, repent. So apparently they all had sinned and be baptized, every one of you, every one of you. Do you see that? Be baptized, that's immersed, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all who are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Many are called. Do you see that? Did you see that before? Many are called, but few are chosen. There was millions of people out there keeping this holy day. As many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourself from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. 3,000 people kept, kept the saying about repenting, being baptized, and receiving God's Holy Spirit. Now we have these two very important booklets that we're, we'd love to send to you today. All you need to do is call us. We'll have somebody at the telephone waiting for your call. What do you mean salvation? The second booklet is why were you born? Now we have a meeting place. We meet every Saturday at one o'clock where we have an interactive Bible study. You are all invited. Just bring your Bible, a notebook and a pen. If you don't have a Bible, we have extras. We meet at 1701 East Missouri. Our phone number is down there at the bottom. We meet at one o'clock every Saturday. Please join us for an interactive Bible study in which you have a chance to ask questions. Uh, we'd be happy to answer any questions. We could, we'd be happy to, uh, happy to help you in any w uh, way that we possibly can. We can counsel with you. Well, folks, until next time, this is Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God saying goodbye, my friends. You have been listening to What is Truth? with Pastor Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God located in Las Cruces, New Mexico. For copies of today's lesson or for more information, call area code 575 650 7359. That's 575-650-7359. Join us next week at this same time for another edition of What is Truth? Until next week, we wish you God's richest blessings.